There's an old religious joke that Lutherans don't recognize the Pope, Catholics don't recognize the Bible, and Baptists don't recognize each other in the liquor store. Today I want to show that Catholics do recognize the Bible. I want to dig into this reading from the Gospel verse by verse and see what's going on and then see what it has to do with us. So we are in the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, the beginning, verses 21 to 28. Last week, Jesus called his disciples. This week, he begins his public ministry. This morning we read, Then they came to Capernaum. Now Capernaum was a, a town on the way to the sea. It was a trading center. So Jesus starts his teaching there so that his teaching will spread with all the people coming and going. And on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. He goes to the synagogue to teach, which is what rabbis do. He's not a political rabble-rouser in the street. He assumes a position of religious authority. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now, the way a, a, a scribe uh, would teach was to refer to, her, to who his teachers were. His authority came from being in this long line, this tradition of Jewish teachers. That's what gave him the authority to teach. He didn't do it on his own. Jesus is a carpenter, a craftsman. Who taught him? Whose authority does he teach by? He's teaching on his own authority. And it's a powerful teaching. There's something in it that resonates with these people. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. Now the action shifts. We move away from Jesus' teaching because we're about to understand by whose authority he teaches. So we go to this crazy man with the evil spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Has you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The evil spirit recognizes who Jesus is. He's the only one in the room that knows Jesus' true identity. In fact, if you go all the way through Mark's Gospel, the only ones to get Jesus' identity right are the evil spirits. Not his family, not his disciples, the evil spirits that recognize him. Why? Because in the Jewish world, there were kind of three levels of being. There's the human level, and humans didn't have a lot of power. And then above them was the realm of the spirits, where good spirits and evil spirits lived, and they had power over the humans. And above all of that was the realm of God, and God had ultimate power, power over the spirits, power over human beings. So Jesus rebukes him and says, quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out. The fact that Jesus could drive the evil spirit out of the man showed that he was not operating with human power. He was operating with the power of God because he had power over the spirit world. His power came from God. All were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. 
So in Mark's Gospel, Jesus answers the question of where his authority comes from by this first, this dramatic exorcism at the very beginning of the Gospel to show that God has given him the power to not only drive out spirits, the power of nature that we'll see later, over nature that we'll see later in the Gospel, but he also has the power to teach. Miracles in Mark's Gospel are not so much about healing. Miracles in Mark's Gospel, more importantly, show Jesus' authority. God gives Jesus his credentials to teach, just like you know, the state of New York gives people credentials to teach in New York schools. So what does this have to do with us? For me, believing in Jesus, believing that Jesus is the Holy One of God, that Jesus has God's power, and that that power can come into my life, is a life and death decision. It's about having the power in me to do good and overcome evil. It means following the path of what's right so that I can come to a place of being happy and content rather than being anxious and fearful and living in a lie. Believing in Jesus as the Holy One of God is not a preference like, well, I'd rather live near the mountains than the sea, or, well, I'm more of a liberal than a conservative. It's not, not one of those kinds of choices. The kind of choice that influences everything else in your life. It means living in the truth living in happiness in this life and in the next. Jesus has the power over evil and I need that power so that I can make good choices in my life. Jesus not only teaches me right from wrong, but he gives me the power to choose the right. Now what was it that impressed those people in the synagogue They heard the truth with power behind it. They heard the voice of God speaking through Jesus. Our first reading from Deuteronomy is a prophecy that God will send a prophet, and Jesus is putting himself in the position of that prophet. Now the evil spirit shrieks, have you come to destroy us? The evil spirit knows that Jesus has the power, power over the chaos that this spirit is creating. The darkness of the spirit is overcome by the light of Christ. Choosing Jesus, choosing good over evil. Now in Jesus' time, if this, what we might call mental illness, what we might call schizophrenia, they would, they would say it was an evil spirit in somebody. I do believe in both psychiatry, the modern scientific approach to medicine. I also believe in evil. Some days, look at the newspaper, it's easier to believe in evil than it is in good. I believe that there is a force for evil. The Bible calls it Satan. The Bible tells us quite a bit about Satan. John 8, 44 tells us that Satan is the father of lies. 1 Corinthians 14 tells us that Satan is the author of chaos. Matthew 12, 15 tells us that Satan divides rather than unites. And Jesus is the opposite of all of that. Jesus brings peace. Jesus speaks the truth. Jesus has come to reconcile us 
not to divide us. Jesus has come to build up this communion of followers that we Catholics call the mystical body of Christ. So, if you have someone in your life who lies, creates chaos in your life, divides you from other people, avoid that person. Seek after the people who will tell you the truth, who seek to build up community, who are reconcilers. One of my favorite definitions of God is G-O-D, good, orderly direction. That's what God brings into my life, direction, good, orderly direction. Brings me to peace in my life, contentment. Our Our presence at this Mass today says that that is what we are seeking. We are seeking God's power. We are seeking God's direction. We want the power of Christ to protect us from evil and lead us to the truth. And that is our prayer today for ourselves, for our church, for our country.